important thing is to let everyone who counts know that the new bishop to succeed Oxentius must be a follower of Arius. He's absolutely got to be an Arian. I just don't think that'll be enough to calm the waters. There are a lot of Christians that are loyal to Rome living in Milan, Father, that won't side with us. Yes, but the Milanese merchants and their servants will only acclaim a name chosen by us, we who run the city. You'll see, Theodatus, trust me. In the autumn of 374, the Christians of the Church of Milan had paid their last respects to the city's late Bishop Oxentius. Milan was situated in an area of prime strategic importance to the administrative organization of the Roman Empire, which in those years was still intact, despite pressure from the bordering and migratory peoples whom the Romans called the barbarians. Only slightly over 60 years had passed since the emperors Constantine and Licinius had closed once and for all the era of persecution, granting Christians like everyone else the freedom of each to follow his own religion. In Milan, there were now perhaps more Christians than pagans, but they were divided among themselves. Some followed the teachings of the priest Arius of Alexandria regarding the true nature of God, teachings rejected by the Roman church and by a multitude of Christian communities from the east to the west. The Arians were declared heretics, that is, contrary to the truth revealed by Christ. Because of this, the choice of Bishop Oxentius' successor was raising a storm of controversy among Milanese Christians. Stop where you are! Quiet, good dog. Let them tell us what it is they want from us. We want to know where you're going, pious monks. And you're asking us with your swords drawn because you intend to kill us or to scare us? We are not here to scare you, but to know where you're going. Why are you bothering with simple souls like us? My lord, the Mistius, wants to remind you that the land on which your monastery is sitting was his father's, and it's now his. And the stones used to build it were also taken from this land, and thus are also his. We're well aware of that. It's all written in our monastery's chronicles. Many years ago, your lord's father gave this land to Bishop Athanasius, who had come here with his companions from Alexandria in Egypt. He was exiled to Milan by the Emperor because he refused to accept the heretic priest Arius among his clergy. But it's true, fifty years have gone by, and maybe your master has forgotten who our father Athanasius was. My lord never forgets anything. That's why he sent us to warn you that you'll be evicted from this land if you don't obey him. It is written here who's to be elected bishop. Remember the name. But this man is an Arian. We can't accept him. You have to, because my lord Themistius is an Arian too, and so are we. Your master knows perfectly well we will never acclaim an Arian bishop of Milan, a heretic condemned by the bishops of the Church of Rome. Then we will reduce your monastery to rubble. No one enters until the new bishop is elected. But if you don't let us in, they're sure to elect an Arian bishop. Well, that's just what we want, an Arian bishop. Get out of the way. Clear the entrance. Step aside. What brings you here, Governor? I want no bloodshed. It would be shameful for the followers of Christ to kill each other over the simple election of their bishop. Maybe you're right on that, Governor. Go on, open up. It's Presbyter Julius' turn now. The Holy Spirit will descend on the man we pick as our bishop, as it descended on the apostles on the day of Pentecost. He must, therefore, be a man of faith, pious in manner, and possess authority as only you Baldus can. Just tell us if Ubaldus is loyal to the Nicene Creed, the only creed of the bishops of the Church of Rome or a follower of the heretic Arius. But that has no relevance now. No, it, it should be told. It 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 Come on, answer us. In their love of the Christ, Arians are no different from anyone else. You all know that. Well, Baldus we is don't want him. He's, He's not one of us. Arian. If we can't acclaim Presbyter Eubaldus as our bishop today, we'll do it another time. But we will never allow the acclamation of a bishop we do not want. We don't want we your want an bishop. Arian. We'll never be we'll an bishop. The Mistius, get back among the congregation. This is not your place. You can't stay here. Yeah, sit down. Yeah, we yeah, have to be quiet. 
Put away your sword and take your master back to his place in the congregation now. How can you expect the Holy Spirit to descend on the new bishop you have to elect if your hearts are full of hate? I'm the Roman governor of this province, but here in the Church of Christ, I'm just a learner. I have no authority, and yet I wouldn't be surprised that the Lord came here and chased you all the way like he did the moneylenders in the Temple of Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit doesn't descend on him who doesn't love sinners and the poor who's ready to govern with duplicity, with the corruption of money and the violence of the sword. Jesus always repeated, in truth, in truth I say unto you, but he who is ready to disown the truth is certainly not like him. A bishop has a mandate to teach, but how can he do it in truth if he practices deceit? I say to you, you must open up your hearts truly to the Holy Spirit. <gasps> Ambrose for bishop! Ambrose! Ambrose for Bishop! 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 The Lord be praised, we have our new Bishop. But I can't do it. I'm the Roman governor of Amelia and Liguria, a dignitary of the Empire. I'd have to ask the Emperor's permission. But the community has as good as elected you. You know that the voice of the people is the voice of God. You can't refuse. I understand, but I'm a total neophyte in the church. I'm not even baptized. Yet you want to make me bishop. I'm just an unworthy sinner. You all know that. Unfortunately, it didn't go the way we wanted. One of our people should have been elected, an Arian. But maybe there's still time. Ambrose is stubborn as a mule. He keeps repeating he doesn't want to be bishop, and it seems he's even gone into hiding. I'd like to know who started everyone yelling his name. I just can't believe that it all happened by accident. It shouldn't be hard to find out. Done, and that makes five. Five is fine, that's it. That's all I need. You're Marcus, aren't you? Yes, that's me. Hey, let me go! You're hurting me! I hear me. that yesterday you were the one who started shouting, Ambrose for Bishop. Yes, that's right. It was my idea. If you tell me who told you to say his name, I'll give you this. Nobody told me, I swear. Nobody told me to say it. I don't believe you. I said if you tell me, I'll give you this nice coin. See how shiny it is. It's yours. When he started talking, car. I liked what he was saying, and so I started shouting. Don't lie, or you'll be very sorry. I'm telling you, nobody told me to say anything. He was so wonderful when he started talking. Maybe it happened like you say. I don't know whether to believe you. I'll let me sure go, let me go. You're hurting me, let me go, you're hurting me. Leave him alone. What do you want here? What are you doing to my son? Nothing, nothing, it was a mistake. The year of our Lord, 374. Greetings, boys. <laughs> ha! This is an edict from the Imperial Vicar. Huh? Greetings, I am Leontius. What's going on? Greetings to you, Leontius. This is an Imperial Edict. The order is to open it and to read it in front of me immediately. Follow me. Ambrose is hiding here in my house. Whoa. An Imperial Edict has arrived. It concerns you, Ambrose. The Emperor consents and orders that the will of the people be respected. Seems to me it's a sign you can't ignore. Yes, it's the latest of many signs. It means this is the will of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Brothers, here is my promise of loyalty to God and to you here present, who are my people and my witnesses. Before him, I declare that the truth of Christ was proclaimed for all men by the bishops at the Council of Nicaea, 
and that I will give my life rather than betray this truth. The 318 fathers gathered at Nicea all prayed together thusly, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one in being Ambrose. with the Father. He's a saint. Through him all things were made on earth, as it is in heaven. For us man and for our salvation he came down from heaven, took bodily form and became man, suffered, rose again on the third day, ascended into heaven and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Did you hear him? Do you realize? He proclaimed the Nicene Creed as if Holy Arius hadn't taught us anything. I was right, my friends. Now it'll take a hired assassin. That's sheer folly. If he were to die a violent death, it'd be hard to avoid Imperial justice. I have a bag of gold coins set aside. I would be willing to get rid of them in a wink. So what exactly are you offering? You were just talking about an assassin. Now the die is cast. Simplicianus. Ambrose. They tore me away from the courts and the judiciary, and they've made me a bishop. I have to teach what I haven't yet learned. I have to learn and teach at the same time. Not to worry, Ambrose. The Lord will be your instructor. But one thing I've learned already. A bishop must be poor. These are the documents with which I give all I possess. To the Church of Milan and to its poor, I want it said he was tested with gold and found just. But you realize you'll be reduced to poverty. I have placed my life in God's hands, and anyway, the Lord has put you in my path along with the Holy Spirit to keep me from going astray. Simplicianus, help me be a good bishop. Bishop Ambrose tenaciously applied himself to study, and under Simplicianus' guidance, in just a few years, he became an astute theologian with a profound knowledge of the Holy Scriptures, the great fathers of the Church, and the protagonists of the theological debates of the time all aimed at establishing the exact nature of the person of Jesus, a debate that often seemed to be trying to violate the mystery of God ever impenetrable to man. But the Arian Christians continued to campaign against Ambrose, stirring up hostility and slander. Ambrose, however, confronted them openly. His catechizing converted slews of pagans and convinced a lot of Arians to disavow Arianism. Every truth must be expressed with clarity. The Father and the Son are one, not thanks to confusion, but due to the unity of the nature of the Holy Spirit. There's one thing I can't understand, Bishop Ambrose. The Son of God wanted to suffer and was crucified like a common thief. I must confess, to me that's rather scandalous. I can sympathize. Many others have felt your same distress. But Jesus wept so that you might not weep. He suffered abuse so that you might not suffer from the abuse you receive. The weaknesses of Jesus are your strength. His doubts strengthen us in our faith. Jesus accepted the sacrifice on the cross to give us the salvation of life everlasting. Have I been clear? I understand, my father. He took our same bodily form because he had to be tempted. He had to and wanted to suffer with us all. He did this for our salvation. It has to be done at night, but very soon. We should have done it sooner. The people have come to love him, you know. We've no choice. It must be tonight. Jovius has been fatally injured. He managed to drag himself home. He says he will only confess his sins to you. You came all the way here alone? Where is your master? He's nearby. We need you to come now before it's too late. Please, let's go. Lead the way. Jesus also understood when someone was about to betray him. You had me come here for this? To kill me? Don't do it, if you want to save your soul. It's no use. My soul is lost already. I've been paid by your enemies with a sack of gold coins. I'm sorry for them, and also for you, brother. You worry about getting ready to meet your god. 
I thought we believed in the same God, and that we were brothers. Say your prayers, Ambrose, because soon it will be too late. I will, but first you must tell me what it is my enemies have against me. They hold what you teach against you, Ambrose, because what you teach is not right. That's what I was afraid of, and you do not know it yet, my brother. But the force of the truth I teach will not let you kill me, because this is not the will of God. All I know is my blade doesn't care what the will of God is. God have mercy on you and your soul. Despite his opponent's hostility, Ambrose continued with selfless determination to carry on his ministry. His theological treatises on Christian truth became known to the churches of both East and West and to the Supreme Pontiff, the Bishop of Rome. In the year 387, the empire suffered one of its gravest defeats. Ambrose had to deal with the consequences of that event. In the spring of that year, tribes of Visigoths crossed the Danube and penetrated as far as the gates of Adrianople. The barbarians now advanced towards a vast walled Roman city before which was arrayed the Roman infantry. On the morning of August 9th, 387, the horde of Visigoths broke through the Roman formation. Emperor Valens realized all was lost when the Visigoth cavalry broke the compactness of his ranks. It turned into vicious hand-to-hand -hand combat and became a massacre. The legionaries hung on, but at sundown, a fresh horde of Visigoth horsemen arrived from the west and overran the surviving Roman forces. An arrow struck Emperor Valens who fled wounded across the battlefield and into a cane break with some of his guards. They thought they were safe, but the Visigoths set fire to the cane break. With a favorable wind, it didn't take the flames long to reach the fugitives, and that was the end of them. After the defeat, Many people fled to the north. The refugees seeking to escape the cruel aftermath of the Visigoth invasion numbered many thousands. The Arian, Empress Justina, and her adolescent son, Valentinianus, were also among those fleeing the barbarians. Bless you, brother. But how did you manage to get all the way here in that condition? I was carried cross-country by my loyal troop mates for 30 days. Brave Centurion Philippus was in command of our Centuria. Out of 100 men, we are all that's left. It was mass slaughter. There were thousands of them. I saw them coming from every side on their horses. May our Lord Jesus save the Empire. Why are you kneeling? Bishop Ambrose, we've come to seek your help. Speak up then, brother. Many of my companions died in combat, but many others were captured and will be made slaves for sure if the ransom demanded by the Visigoths isn't paid immediately. Fear not. The Imperial administration will pay it, I am sure. But the Imperial vaults have no more gold. That's what we've been told. The Empire's treasury has been drained to pay for all the war expenses. There's nothing left. It's true. Forming armies and marching against the enemy is easy. But when the hour of defeat comes, the state power darkens as our soldiers are overwhelmed by suffering and death. All that's left then is the mercy of God. Thank you, my sister, and may God bless you. It's for our son. He was at Adrianople and hasn't come back. I don't deserve your prayers, Bishop Ambrose. I persecuted you. I paid an assassin to murder you. <laughs> Forgive me, Ambrose. I'll pray for your son's return. As for what you did to me, I've already forgiven you. Now you must ask forgiveness of God. Simplicianus, will all this be enough to pay the ransom? 
No, it's not enough. It's still too little. It's a small price to pay, I suppose. Brothers, we'll take the treasure of our church and donate it to the ransom fund as well. What a noble act. Oh, how generous. And the gold objects of our church, excluding the holy chalices, will be melted down with the gold that you've all donated to pay the ransom that's been demanded. All we have, we have received from God. And so today we give it back to save our brothers who need help. Only thus can we hope to soon have them back among us. Come forward. Brother Ambrose, you have fought the just battle of truth, and you shall go on fighting it for the glory of God, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Damaso, I've come to you as to the feet of Christ himself. Go, Ambrose, our prayers are with you. Go take your seat and bear witness together with us to the truths of faith in God. <laughs> 